Hey everybody, it's Chad. We're back with another exciting adventure through the magical land of puppets. I hope you've been playing along at home. The voting and campaigning for the various character designs was fierce. There were some really great designs. And a couple terrible ones from that guy. Me. But remember kids, there are no losers in puppet land. I don't care what Terry Pavlovich told me in fifth grade. But only three designs can be victorious and they are... These are gonna be super fun and hard to build. But no one said puppet making was easy. If it was, everyone would be doing it, right? Wait, isn't that the point of the show? To make it accessible for everyone? Hush up, you. Which brings us to today's topic of Puppet Building 101. I'm gonna do a quick 30,000 foot flyover on this. This is for someone who's new to puppet making, just starting out. Puppet building is a giant topic. We could do an entire series just on that. As a matter of fact, some people have. We're just gonna get you new aspiring puppet makers pointing in the right direction. If there's things I missed or you need more in-depth information on, we'll come back and get it answered. Okay, deep breath. <gasps> Let's do this. First, the quickest route into puppet making is to start simple with a pattern. It's how I did it. I highly recommend it to any beginner. Head on over to Project Puppet's website and buy a pattern. They're cheap, there is a good variety that will probably meet your needs, and they have kindly offered a 25% discount to all you v watchers out there. The discount only applies to the Simple Series patterns, but that's where we're starting, simple, right? All the info's in the show notes below, check it out. Also, if you're looking for a more step-by-step -step guide, check out the awesome video series from Tom Stewart of Puppeteers Unite. It has over two hours of real-time footage of him building puppets right off these patterns we're gonna talk about today. Now the puppets we're going to be building are mostly made of fabric and foam. The best fabric to start with is fleece. Don't worry about buying the fancy stuff at this point. Head on over to your local fabric store and get whatever is on sale, whatever's the cheapest. For foam, you're going to need some good squishy poly foam, again, probably at your fabric store. You're going to also need some sharp scissors, razor blade, contact cement, needle and thread, some pins, a coat hanger, and a plethora of other random odds and ends that we will get to along the way. Now, using the pattern you bought, you're going to cut out all those pieces. I'm using the oblong pinhead one for this demonstration. This pattern is what good old MVB is made out of. I label the pieces so I remember what they are. I usually use a chalk pencil because it's not permanent. You can also use a sharpie, just be careful so it doesn't bleed through. Ugh. Sharp scissors make cutting fabric a whole lot easier. Don't ever use your nice scissors on things like cardboard or foam. It ruins them. Don't do it! Now you're going to pin your pieces together and sew them. If you have a sewing machine, it's going to save you a lot of time and give you a pretty uniform stitch. However, you can also just sew it by hand. Some portions you're going to have to sew by hand. But I use a machine for the big portions because I'm big and clumsy. They look like big, strong hands. Follow the directions and soon you have all your pieces put together. Yay! Next, let's cut some foam. The best way to cut foam is a plain old razor blade. Razor blades are very sharp. Be careful, don't cut your fingers off. Keep the blades straight up and down while cutting. Here's a little trick when the blades get dull, put them in a container like an old peanut butter jar. This will keep them out of harm's way. Whatever you do, don't just throw them in the trash. What happens when you remember you accidentally threw away that receipt, you're digging through the trash and <gasps> what a butter fingers. You get the point, right? Puns. Everybody loves puns. Next, you glue the foam pieces together. Get some contact cement. Don't do this in an enclosed space and use a respirator. Stuff will make you loopy and kill brain cells. You know I'm probably your father. <sighs> Brush it on both sides that need to be glued. Wait a few minutes, then press them together. And voila, you have a foam puppet skull. Now put the foam inside your puppet head and body, and you've got the basic puppet ready to go. This is where I put it on a stand of some sort. Glue a cardboard shipping tube to a board, or screw some boards together. Heck, have your friend Steve hold it. Get creative. But it's really helpful. It allows you to have your puppet up in front of you with your hands free when you're doing all the fun facial features and details at the end. Trust me. Now let's make some arms. If you want posable fingers, you're gonna to have to have some wire of some sort inside there. You can use this thicker stuff, or you can buy the cheap floral wire and just wrap it around itself to make it a thicker gauge. The cheap way to get your arm rods? Use an old coat hanger. Pro tip, go to your dry cleaner and get one of the really thick, heavy-duty ones like they use on linens. Way better. If you wanna get fancier, or you live somewhere without coat hangers, 
you can go to your hardware store and buy metal rods. They're usually in the welding section. I've even seen people use wooden dowels and Velcro. Get creative. Sew the arms onto the body and you're almost there. Another pro tip, if you're a violent puppeteer and you're really getting working on those, you can actually rip an arm off in the middle of a performance. Make sure to sew them on with extra care. Now for the most fun part. Let's put some features on this thing. Hair? Try yarn. Or some scraps of fur? Or buy a wig? If you're really brave, you can search through your secondhand treasure stores and find some pretty awesome old creepy wigs. Eyes! Ping pong balls are a common go-to. Or buttons. Or plastic Easter eggs. I like the ones that are split down the uh, long ways instead of through the middle. Creepy doll eyes. Mama. A fun thing to try for ears, noses, freckles, other little bits is needle felting. Get some wool roving. It comes in all sorts of different colors. Bunch it up and poke it like 100 billion times and it'll start to hold together into a shape. You can get some pretty cool things out of them and then you just poke it into your puppet. Stabbing yourself with one of these ugly shot bobbed needles will result in pain and suffering. Be careful. Clothing. You can make your own clothes. Look for toddler sized clothing patterns at your fabric store. But for starters, let's just go back to that second hand store where you found your old wig and buy some regular old toddler clothes. Size 18 to 24 months. They fit these puppets surprisingly well. And the work's already done for you. And there you have it, folks. Your very own puppet. For today's Spaghetti Western Challenge, I need you to come up with your best character names for our top three characters. Some of the ideas and designs already came with names, but it's all fair game now. Tell me if you like the names they already have. Do you want to call them something different? It's all up to you. Put your ideas in the comments down below or over on the Crash Boom forums. I'm really excited to see what you come up with. Remember to check out Project Puppet if you want to learn to build your own puppets at home. Until next time, I hope you're having your own grand adventures out there, my lovelies. Thanks for being a part of our little family. And as always, Yes, yes, it was all very scientific, but what about the feelings? Um, I'm not following. Um, you know, like, when a puppet daddy and a puppet mommy really love each other, then, you know.